Well, good evening, Generation Impact. I'm so excited to be with you this evening. And uh, tonight is one of those heavy topics. But I trust that as I go through it carefully and systematically with you, I trust that you're going to learn something incredible. All right, so we are dealing with topic number 225. I'm dealing with the issue of Babel, the world system, Israel, and the church. All right, these four different distinct things, how they mix together and how it has come about in our world. So let's just pray together as we come in line. Father, I thank you, Lord, that as we come around your word tonight, Lord, that you're going to help us. Lord, that we will understand the insight that you have for us in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you're going to help me to communicate this very clearly and very simply. And Lord, that we're going to understand exactly what has transpired in our world. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, so tonight we're going to be going into a little bit of a history lesson. And we're basically going to give you the history of where Israel has come through, where the world has come through, and where the church has come through. Okay, and so this is really important because when we understand where these three flows are going and what's happened to them, it's going to help you understand where you and I fit in and what to expect. So let's start off right at the beginning. All right, right with Cain and Abel. When Cain killed Abel, this started a catalyst where Satan started to get involved in the earth to such a degree that the world became so corrupt. In fact, it got so corrupt that God ultimately had to bring a flood. And so what happens is, if you go read in Genesis chapter 4, verse 16 to 20, and I'm not going to read up scripture now, I'm going to give you a lot of references, but there's a lot of ground to cover tonight, so please bear with me. But what happened here was this, that Satan had an entrance into the world. And so he started to corrupt mankind. The Bible says that the pre-flood generation, what Noah was, it says this, that the world could only think evil. Can you imagine being part of a world that could not even think of good? To such a degree that only eight people out of the entire planet were saved. And that is how bad the corruption and the um, deterioration of mankind had become. Okay, that God actually obliterated the entire planet, except for eight, and said, let's start again. Except that when the new generation started after Noah, Satan was right back to start up his nonsense again. Except that this time, there was an element of resistance. Because in this time, where Satan tried to take over the whole planet once again, just like he did with Cain. This time, God said, I'm going to choose myself a nation. And this time, there was a resistance. This time, there was a group of people who decided to serve God and to genuinely have a God that would love them. And this nation was called Israel. And so, <clears throat> this time, this nation genuinely tried to serve the Lord. Okay, many of them didn't. And you, we'll get to some of it, but Initially, they were trying to resist some of this evil. Now, Satan got hold of an individual called Nimrod. And just like he had got hold of Cain, he made a huge impact on the world. Now, Nimrod built himself a city. And he called the city Babylon. Now, you read it in Genesis chapter 10. Okay, after the flood, Genesis chapter 10, verse 8 to 12. And you see that the source of this Assyrian Babylon culture starts producing the pharaohs. Okay, starts producing the Assyrians. And what this does, it starts a process of corrupting the earth. And so when you see Babylon being built and Nimrod builds this incredible city, was one of the biggest, strongest cities around. It then starts an opposition. It then starts a fight for control over the planet. And so we are going to see prophetically, if you go to Joel chapter 1 verse 4, and Joel chapter 2 verse 25, 
you'll see that there are four stages of what a locust develops into. Okay? And what is interesting about this is, is through these prophetic words in the Bible, you'll see that these four stages are covered as four nations or four time frames or four eras. Whoever was the superpower at that time was given a name. And they're going to four different levels that then bring us into the end times. And so I need you to understand that this is important. Because God is actually showing us ahead of time what is going to transpire. So the world is going to get worse and worse and worse. Now we find this so um, unsettling, disturbing, that the world is getting worse and the church just seems to panic. We should not be panicking. We should be looking at what the word says and what to expect. And know that God is going to take us through this time. And as this world is getting darker, the light is going to get lighter. Remember this is a principle. God always works in the dark. As long as there's darkness around, God is at work. There's something happening. And so don't get discouraged as we go through tonight's topic. I'm just explaining you the season that we're in. And so what happens is out of the city of Babylon, we start a process that starts transpiring into the decay of man once again. Step by step, it gets worse. Step by step, we start ending into the thing of ending up where you end up with the, literally the locust. The locust is the one that destroys and dis totally kills everything. All right, I'm going to show you how this works and how we get there. Firstly, I want to just take the element of um, the world, the world system. How does the world system degenerate to where we are? I want you to understand that one of the things that Babylon did was that they had to come and take control of Israel. Remember, um, they came and brought Israel. Israel captive for a season in Babylon. You know, Boney M sings that song, which is so true. It says, by the rivers of Babylon. All right. We were first laid down. And they remember the bondage of Israel being in Babylon. Now, remember, I said to you, Satan had to control this nation. He had to take control of this nation. And so Babylon comes and takes Israel bondage and captive. There's a difference this time. Israel does not remain in Babylon like they did in Egypt. But when they went to Egypt, they got comfortable, they stayed there, they never left. This time when they get taken into bondage, they want to get out. Nehemiah then asked, request, God softens the king to get them out. But Satan's plan was always to come and take Israel out of the picture. Make sure Israel doesn't ever get reinstated, doesn't come back. And that's why you'll see Israel is permanently being attacked. And Satan thought he got it right in AD 70 when they came and the Romans came and destroyed Israel. But let's get here. So what happens is Babylon comes and sucks up Israel. And Babylon is your first level, the first superpower that comes to come and bring decay onto the earth. And so this superpower starts totally dismantling what God has had. And so they are known as the palmer worm. Step one, level one of decay is the palmer worm. And that is the nation or the superpower of Babylon. After Babylon came and they had had their way, another superpower comes up and that was the Medo-Persians. Now they are the locusts. That's the level of the locust. 
But before the Medo-Persians take over, remember that Babylon had released the, some of the Israelites and they went home. So now you've got two strands going down. You've got the one strand, that is the world, Babylon, the Medo-Persia, but you've still got Israel still busy fighting, serving God, not serving God, good king, bad king, in between. So you've got these two legs running on the planet as we're going forward. And so this is slightly different to what happened with Cain and Abel. And so this time, Satan's not got total control because there's still a nation that's rejecting these ways. But let's go down the low row of the degeneration of the world. Let's take the world leg now. There's three legs we're going to look at. We're going to look at the world. We're going to look at Israel. And then we are going to look at the church. Okay, so that we understand where we're going. So let's look at the world. First leg, Babylon, which is known as the Palmer worm. The second degenerated thing is known as the locust, the small little locust, which is the Medo-Persia. The third one is Greece, which is known as the canker worm. Okay. The fourth one, which is Rome or the new Rome, the Roman Empire, which is known as the caterpillar. So you got Babylon, you got Persia, you got Greece, and you end up in Rome. Now these are the four developing locusts. Let's call it as the things develop into a locust. These are the stages. Now, I'm going to show you what happens to the world after Rome. Because what happened with the Roman Empire, so now you've got these superpowers that stood up. But Rome, very interesting, never got defeated. The Roman Empire never got defeated. They literally split up into ten smaller sections. Okay, which got absorbed. And we're going to go into that history. But I want to show you what's going to be coming. Because the Bible is very clear that out of those ten divisions of what was Rome, a little one stands up and never dies. And that little one is the Roman Catholic Church. They have never died. They are the smallest country known as the Vatican. They are a sovereign state in their own right. And when you read it in the Bible, they are known as the little horn. The little Rome. Okay, and I'm going to show you where that came out of and why that is significant into what's transpiring in time to come. So while we've got this degeneration of nations coming together. All right, so so far we stopped at Rome. I'm going to just leave it there. I want you to think of the first level ending at Rome. Let's go to the next level. What happened to Israel in this time? Well, Israel came out of Babylon. They were released on that first level. They became a nation again. And so they were carrying on again and they were just doing fine. They went back to their hometown. Until A.D. 70, when the Romans came and destroyed them. Now they were totally obliterated. Their nation was gone. Their language was gone. Everything had ended with Rome. Except God had a plan. Israel was the only nation ever recorded in history. To lose its nation, to lose its sovereignty, to lose its language, and then to come back. They came back from absolutely nothing. 1947, they got back and they started again. Now, why is this significant? It is significant for this reason. God has never left Israel. He made a covenant with, with Abraham and said, Abraham, I will permanently look after your nation. 
It's not conditional on you or what you do or don't do. I make a covenant against myself and I will choose Israel as my nation. Now, since Israel has come back as a nation, have they served God? No. All right, they have not come back to God. They are not serving God. But God has not left Israel. So one of the things that has really disturbed the, the, the demonic setup is the fact that suddenly there are a bunch of Christians all over the place because Jesus Christ has now come. What is very important is Jesus Christ came, listen carefully to this, while Israel still had a nation. Jesus Christ came, God protected Israel. Jesus Christ came and then suddenly everybody got born again. After Jesus Christ left, the Christianity flow went way past just the nation of Israel. Now all the Gentiles, all of us can get saved. So now the resistance to Satan's plan has increased. It's not just focusing on one little nation anymore. Now he's going to contend with a whole lot of Christians all over the world. And all of a sudden this resistance has come to a level that he's never had before. Because now we have got Christians all over the world. And what's more, they have the Holy Spirit inside of them. This is a different level of warfare that Satan has ever had. And so what he does is he destroys the nation of Israel in AD 70. Thinking that he has now overpowered this and he's got this thing sorted. Because Israel was his biggest primary focus. But in 1948... They all came back. So now he's still got Israel, which he hates with a passion. That's why the Bible says the rest of us need to pray for the nation of Israel. Now God has promised that he will always look after the nation and he will pull them through. So right now I want you to see there's two levels running here. You've got the level of the demonic. Where Satan is really trying his best to take over the earth. He's got Israel that is fighting, that is still waiting on their Messiah, but they're not serving him. But because of a covenant, they are still there. Now, there's another level. This has been the church. The church has got two levels running. The godly church and the ungodly church that runs. I'm going to show you how the church of Jesus Christ has degenerated to the point that we are just about the same as the world. But there is always a remnant. So let's have a look at the third level, the church. The church started, if we take the letters to the churches in Revelation, which most of us know about, and, and I'm sure that you had a lot of teaching, which I've taught a lot about. But the first one is the Pergamum church. All right, and what happens here is this, is this is where the compromise starts with us. They start mixing with the world. They start using some of the Babylonian principles and the world things start kicking in. And so when Rome comes and destroys, when Rome comes and destroys Israel, they start influencing the church now. Now this is important. Rome comes and was used by Satan. Remember, they'd gone through these powers and ended up. And Rome was known as the caterpillar. And so now all of a sudden, Rome comes, destroys Israel at the time. Now comes after the church to mix this, the church up. So what do they do? We end up with Constantine from the, from the Roman uh, governor. And they leads to the Thyatiran church, Thyatira. The church of Thyatira comes out of this. Which goes, which is known as the sacramentalist church, which is basically the Roman Catholic church. So out of this, they, they birth, Rome births, the Roman Catholic church that is mixed from the world system. That is run from its own country. And this is where Satan is coming. He says, okay, I'm going to degenerate the world. 
I think that I've sorted Israel out, which he gets a surprise a bit later on in time. Now he comes after the church. He says, now I've got to take out the church. So what does he do? He comes to the church and he starts bringing this whole idolatry of that you've got to pray through Mary. And when you take of the sacraments, it becomes the blood of Jesus and the body of Christ. Now it's idolatry on his highest form. And so out of this reform, we get the reformed churches where they break away and they say, listen, we don't want any part of this. All right, so they say, okay, listen, we're going to do this. We are going to reform out of this thing. We are going to come and we're going to do the right thing. But they come with a whole lot of rules and a whole lot of legalism that brings them into another bondage. And so then out of that comes another flow, which is the Laodicean church, which is the humanistic church, which is where we are today. The humanistic church is the one that says we are seeker sensitive. We don't want to offend anybody. Come to us. We'll give you very nice lights, a nice stage, nice music, and you can come and get your latte. <coughs> we'll give you the nice coffee. We don't offend you. We don't make you repent. We don't push on your sin. We don't push for holiness. I want to tell you right now, that's the most ungodly thing that we can do. And that is why the church of Jesus Christ as a whole has become weak because we've gone for this humanistic idea. But it's all part of Satan's plan. I want you to see what happened. He came and he brought this Roman idea into the church. Then it got into legalism. Then it went to extreme liberalism as to whatever goes. And what's the result? The next step is literally a demonic church. Okay? The Bible speaks about it in Revelation chapter 17 where it's a harlot Babylon. What does that mean? It literally means this. It is a church that all religions are welcome. All religions are together. And guess who still heads it up? The Roman Catholic Church. Remember that all of this comes down to the little horn. So what has happened is, there's been a regression right through as we're going through. Where does it end up? The Antichrist ends up, who would be a Pope, ends up controlling the entire, listen to me, the world system and the church, known as the universal church. If you're not sure, go and Google anything about the universal church, see how many religions are coming in. So two of the legs are going to be 100% impacted and affected. The fourth leg I want to talk about is the Philadelphian church. This is the church that has remained true to God's word. That has stayed under the unction of the Holy Spirit. That has said, God, you are going to lead us, direct us. We will repent. We will do whatever it is. But we're going to stay under your influence. So I want you to see now, we've got four things that run now together. You've got... The world system, which is going to be ended up controlled by the Pope and the world political system, which you'll still see coming. It's developing that way. You've got the church, who's going to end up under a universal church, together with all sorts of religions, already heading up that way, because we're already on the level of humanism. In other words, we just liberal. We can do whatever we want. It's okay. Then you've got the Philadelphian church, the real church. Which is a remnant, folks. This is not the majority of believers. And I believe that God is going to bring a revival still in this season that we are in. Because the Philadelphian church is here until the rapture comes. And the fourth level is the nation of Israel. So what is going to happen is this. The Philadelphian church, the real church, is going to be raptured. So we're going to be taken away very soon. When I say very soon, I'm talking about in the next few years. 
As you can see, things are really progressing very badly for the natural world. I don't think we're quite there yet. All right. Excuse me, I believe that we've still got a few more years on this earth. But the Philadelphian church is going to be raptured. The political system is going to be under the, the rule of the Antichrist. The church system is going to be under the rule of the Antichrist. And they are going to turn on Israel. Now I've already discussed this. There are three major wars of Israel. The first war is the direct neighboring nations. So look out for this. That's the first thing you need to look for. The second war is going to be those around in the Middle East, around those nations. All right, the Ezekiel 38 war is going to be the second war. The third war is going to be the battle of Armageddon. If you are a Christian, you love the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be watching that one. All right, directly standing next to Jesus when you come back down. Okay, so I want you to understand that this whole plan of the new t uh, since the flood is to try and take control of the earth. Satan gets it right with the Antichrist for a season. Until Jesus Christ says enough is enough and he comes and he sorts it all out. And so tonight I want us just to have a look. Where are we right now as we stand? We are in the Laodicean church. We are seeing churches that are seeker sensitive with no power. They've got a form of godliness, looks like a church, but they don't have power. When the trouble comes, they don't know what to do. How do I know that? Because so many people phone me in the middle of lockdown out of crisis. My question is, where were the pastors? What were you taught? I understand you're going through a hard time, but what I didn't understand is you didn't know what to do. That meant that the pastors were not teaching you correctly. Now, where does that come from? We water down the gospel. We don't sit down and make you repent. All right? Number one, that's the state of where the church is. I'm generalizing. Not every assembly is there. I'm generalizing. Number two, the Philadelphian church is alive. Those that love the Lord that are standing there, they remnant, they are carrying a lot of weight right now and a lot of pressure because they are the remnant holding up a lot of the nations. You know that I know in some of the nations in Africa, they've called for prayer meetings. 50,000 people go to a stadium all night prayer meeting to go pray. I want to tell you right now, there is an urgency still of serving God and genuinely looking out for God. The world system is very fast becoming into this place of let's become a one world system. You can see it in everything that's happening. You are now having people wanting us to sign our nations over to the one world health organization or whatever the, the new thing is going to be. Where that organization overrides your local constitution. Now it hasn't come through yet, but it's heading that way. I need you to understand this is all molding to the one world government. So we are heading towards that. So don't be shy or worried when it does start happening. God says it's coming. We're seeing the same with churches. We are now looking for unified churches, uh, universal churches. We all get together. What's going on now? Be careful. We are getting together for the one world religious system. And fourthly, I want you to see that Israel is permanently under attack. All right. They don't like Israel. They don't want Israel because it is a promise that God gave a little nation, not bigger than the free state, but yet it's caused the devil a endless amount of grief. Why? Because Israel carries a covenant and Satan is going to do everything he can to discredit Jesus Christ and God. And so he's going to try everything to get rid of Israel and that's where his downfall is going to be. And so let's pray together. I don't want you to get fearful over this season. I want you to be aware of where we're at and I want you to know that Jesus Christ is alive. Satan's plan is not going to come to pass. God prophesied this many years ago to show us exactly what's coming. 
and how to handle it. We are not unaware. It's not that we don't know what's going on. We don't know what to do. We know exactly what to do. And we know exactly what to look for. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you right now that as we've come around your word, Lord, that you'll help us to apply what we've learned in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your blessing and anointing in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, I thank you that we will not be fearful, that we will be the church of the Philadelphia. And Lord, that we will hear your voice, be obedient to your spirit, and do what you're telling us to do in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, God bless you. I trust that you're going to have a wonderful time. Please grab a cup of coffee. Pastor Les is going to be up right after this. Amen and amen.